Ever since March, when we here at Strange Universe broke the story of the Phoenix UFOs, it just keeps getting stranger. First, the military denied there was anything in the skies. Now, after our latest investigation, they've changed their tune. But it hasn't done anything to change what's mushrooming into a war of the worlds. After all these months, after all this time, the government says it finally has the explanation for those lights that appeared over Arizona back in March. And I can just tell you that our, our planes were out there. They had a number of leftover flares on the aircraft. Each aircraft had to make one final pass over the range to jettison those flares and get rid of them. People could have mistaken these flares for some kind of unidentified object. Simple enough. But to many, it's just too little, too late, after too many denials. Just more wind in a desert storm. If these were flares, or if it was a hoax, or if it was a military operation, we would have people coming forward and saying, yes, they were flares, and we did them, and they're right here. What we have is the opposite. And so if they're extraterrestrial, then they've been out here demonstrating every, every night. It's just a coincidence. The thing that has me the most curious is, why is it anybody else curious about this? Why, didn't, why is everybody else afraid to even talk about it? No. It's a strange sequence of events that leads to the Air National Guard's recent announcement, one that began March 13th and is still a long way from finality. No, no, over here, there's four. When those mysterious lights were first seen and videotaped, we at Strange Universe gathered up many of the witnesses. They knew what they saw. They knew what they had on tape. And they wanted to know why the rest of the national media was ignoring the story. I want to know what, what's going on. Then came the 50th anniversary of the Roswell incident in June. Suddenly, everyone wanted to run UFO stories. Arizona was sitting there, waiting. The networks finally showed the videos. USA Today wrote an article. Everyone got into the act. Even Arizona's governor, Fife Symington, after months of silence, he suddenly announced a full investigation into the Phoenix Lights. Or so it seemed. Uh, don't get him too close to me, please. Or... <clears throat> uh, this just goes to show that you guys are entirely too serious. Francis Barwood of the Phoenix City Council was not laughing. I don't know what his purpose was, but I think that, uh, you know, to make a joke about something that so many people take serious, you know, whether it's a hoax or not a hoax, the thing is, is that people saw this. And by doing that, that he did the same thing that everybody else does, which is make people afraid to say what they saw. Her fellow politicians called Francis Barwood a crackpot. Well, the, the uh, mayor and his uh, chief of staff apparently made up business cards and they had my name on it and it said from the planet xenon and it said um talk into the tin foil and she will hear you the governor and the mayor may have thought their jokes would make the story go away but they did the opposite they lit the fire and others started fanning the flames the air force went on record claiming it had nothing to do with and knew nothing about the lights the national guard was even more adamant all right, the, the summary statement says, to the best of my knowledge, no member of the Arizona Army National Guard or Arizona Air National Guard shot off or dropped any flares on the night of March 13, 1997. Jim Dilatoso is one of the best-known UFO video analysts in the country. He began running the tapes through his computer. There are five videos that we felt were worthy of analysis. We test for flares, we test for airplane lights, tail bop, planets, the moon, hand grenades. Jim Dilatoso and his art director, Michael Tanner, compared computer-generated images of flares with the lights shot by witnesses. So now we're grabbing another frame of video. This is from Chuck Reardon, taken on March 13th also. So now let's go over here and look at the flare. The flare looks completely different. Uh, this is either uh, all ET related, either all government related, super secret black projects, or perhaps a combination of the two. We've considered that. Arizona.
Arizona has a chapter of the Mutual UFO Network. Folks who investigate UFO sightings. You think they'd be excited by the military denials and the findings of Jim Dilatoso? You'd think wrong. Actually, when the very first broadcast ran on an NBC affiliate here, that uh, I said the chances of what we had looked like flares to me. Richard Motzer of Arizona MUFON still subscribes to the flares. We looked up the, the manufacturers of these flares, and they're on for approximately three minutes and go off, and it's exactly what all these do, all the nights. So, you know, it'd be a real coincidence if there's an ET that clicks on for three minutes and goes off. But we listen a little closer. We hear a different tone in Richard Motzer's voice. It seems he has a bone to pick with Jim Dilatoso. Well, I published a paper. It's out this month in the uh, UFO Journal. He's not published anything. All he does is talk about things, things that I don't think can be verified by an independent uh, person that would have the same technical background. Dilatoso says Motzer is not an impartial investigator, but a cynical skeptic. In fact, skeptics, I believe, are committing intellectual violence by coming forward just to smash the stories and prove that all of these people are lying and mistaken. But Dilatoso says he's got bigger things to worry about, like further analysis of the tapes. Inevitably, we wanted to move this theoretical model object and see if we could get a match on the various videos that were shot. He says he's got a match and uncovered startling new evidence of a UFO mothership. In some of the videos, we have a single bright light that is kind of recessed away from the other lights. And this large light in the center may lead the other lights. We have some witness reports that have indicated that the trailing lights literally separated, flew off on their own, and came back and redocked. It seems exciting video. But whether anyone in power authorizes an investigation is another story. And despite the Air Force claim that it was only flares, the search for the truth will continue. I will probably keep pushing till I get some sort of an answer, even if it's where, you know, we're not going to respond. But then if that's their final answer, everybody's going to know about it. My gut feeling is it'll turn out to be some type of military operation. Remember, witness reports eyewitness reports are sufficient evidence in a court of law to sentence a man to the electric chair. So in this case, we have reliable witnesses that if they were to sit on the stand and prosecute someone for a capital crime, they would be believed. Keep you updated. And uh, swung around the left. This UFO looked fake, so Walters contacted UFO analyst Dr. Bruce McAvee. Dr. McAvee is a research physicist under contract to the U.S. Navy and is an expert photo analyst. He is also director of the Maryland chapter of MUFON. When Ed Walters first called Dr. McAvee, he explained why this video could not have been faked. As we talked, I noticed down below the UFO, along the tree line, you could see the movement of a shadow that moved with the UFO. This uh, videotape is very unique because of the fact that that shadow appears uh, on a surface, which is so far away it rules out the hoax. But when Jeff Signo, staff photo and video analyst for MUFON International, first saw the tape, he was far less impressed. My first impression on seeing the video is, this is a really poor fake. I was not impressed at all. What changed my mind regarding it was a careful frame-by-frame -frame check. Okay, up here we see the UFO in the enhanced version. And down here, with the background subtraction, you can see an enhanced version of the shadow somewhat more clearly. So that complicates the fakery of this video. This video is the first time I've ever seen a shadow of a UFO on videotape. But then, so much of the video that comes out of Gulf Breeze is one of a kind. I think definitely there are certain areas in the world that seem to have a higher frequency of sightings than others. 
I've had two daylight sightings and uh, I would say between 100 and 120 nighttime sightings since the first one. It is a very hot spot, so to speak, and I don't know why. Perhaps the same force that drew the Baker's two golf breeze is also drawing in strange objects from another world. Because, for some reason, regular sky watchers here are rarely disappointed by their vigilance. I've written a musical about all of that. It's called The Life, and Cynthia Tornquist gives life to this report. <laughs> Klein reporting live to you from the Tidewater Community College's Physics Laboratory. Here we have Tommy Story, the mastermind behind Tate, from all these Tate series with David Cottonfield. Tommy, the audience wants to know why are we doing this? Uh, we're a couple of sort of bad names. What got you started? Oh, Pleasure Hall. And as you can see, this is the equipment that he's using. Let me get it in focus here. By the very generous Michael Clark. So, where's the uh, your client, Billy Page? Is he around? I'd like to interview him. Okay. Well, while we're waiting, I want to interview. Let me ask you some questions. Uh, what got you started? for how long now? Uh, since February. That's about, uh, around 17 months. And how does your client feel? Billy Payne, the star of all the success. Say something, Billy. Yes, Billy. The audience wants to know your opinion on these state series of David Copperfield. Hey, Rocky, you can pull right out of hat. Right out. Wrong one. David Copperfield came to uh, That's what the audience wants to know. Anyway, um, I don't like the idea. Are you still recording this time? I'm recording. The audience is seeing this live. Okay. I don't mind you guys having fun with Cuffield, but you guys are going too far. How so? You make him like he's, he's sick in the head when he's not. Tommy, what is your reaction on Billy's reaction? Uh, I didn't say that right, I bet. Your comments on Billy's reaction. Uh, Any more comments, Bill? What are you saying here? Any comments? It's all because when he heard, and it's what I heard, but I, so we could have misheard, because you said, because you thought he said, uh, uh, I was going off by six. But it sounded like he said the other thing, which, which kind of made Tommy kind of broke out in the MSS and he's had fun with the tape, making Copperfield go crazy on tapes and have it fun. Did anybody help you with these theories? Oh, um, Tate 5 and Tate 6, Michael Klein helped me with it. And, and uh, obviously he's not here at the moment. No, but uh, Tate 1 through uh, 4, I did myself. Okay. Uh, Michael Klein just went to the room and checked on something. Well, I think he's working on the computer. Before what I, do I watch you for? Before I went. We have a bystander here who's watching this. No, no, <laughs> watching no. this. Any yeah. comments? Uh, um, I don't know. Um, I've been with these fellas for so long that it's hard to tell what he's going to do. It's like... They're on the I know he's been an expert for years, and I think if you want to get into audio production, if you could check with him and Mike Klein, but... So far, they've been the best that I've heard and seen so far. 
So you're saying that they're unpredictable? Yes, that's true. They are unpredictable at times. Is this true? Uh, yeah. Would you consider yourself unpredictable? He's not even looking at the camera. Uh, yes. Billy, there's a spider on you. Oh, yeah. Before I met Tommy, Tommy's favorite musician was Doug Kenny. But then when I showed him Copperfield, and then after school, and then after going to the magic show, the rest is history. He likes Copperfield now. But I like any magician. I mean, I went to see, I heard the, I woke up, I was half asleep, I heard the word, uh, it was Ricky D tonight. They said, the magic of Al Dean tonight. Come to find out, it's just a dog to uh, tell fortune by eating dog food. I didn't know. Tell the Broncos are going to win. The great Al Dean had to wear the Dean on it. But sometimes, usually there's a magician at the drive by. Uh, I imagine the Kmart and all of them. But Copperfield, you know, and all the other Tommy. Well, let's know if you're boring the audience. Okay, let me uh, get a close view of the equipment here. There's the turntable. And there's the, what do we have here? It's an amplifier, cassette deck equalizer, the mixer CD player, and this is the, what appears to be half of a boombox, which consists of CD player, AMF, and cassette, all built in. And way back over there, yeah, way back over here is our little compressor to help, to help keep the signals intact. Where's your Walkman? Okay, well that takes care of the interview. I so think remember, you, you can have this equipment for $59.95 in care of Michael Klein's Corporation of Audio and Visual Effects. I don't think he wants to sell it. Well, thank you guys for the interview. It's uh, Tommy Story and Billy Page, his client, and we have an innocent bystander. I don't know where he disappeared to. But this is Vladimir Klein reporting live from the city. Seem to be seen smoking, all right? Thank you. Thank you, Tella. Smoking, going up You're the stairs. You're welcome, I just want to show everybody that there's no smoking in us, all right? No smoking at all. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah no smoking. All right, go ahead, read the trick. No smoking beyond this point, but yet the smoke goes there. Anyway. Oh, wait a minute, you want me to go, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll tell you when I need you. Anyway. It won't happen again, I promise. This is the last time, okay? All right, the other day. Okay, you two of the This is the last time, I'm telling you, all right? This is it, okay? All right? Go ahead, please. All right. Go through the trap door. Anyway. You won't see me anywhere else, all right? This is it. All right, cameraman, can you uh, cut his head off? <laughs> anyway, show both sides of the, the handkerchief, and you reach inside and produce a coin. Would you like to know how that's done? Uh-huh. Uh, when am I... This is how to do the trick. The coin is in finger palm. And what you do is that when you show both sides of the coin, you watch your angles. Cut! Okay. Here's the coin, folks. Now, what I'm going to do is show both sides of the handkerchief. To the eyes, it looks like it's empty, which it is but the coin is hidden in my thumb palm. And what you do is you release it underneath the handkerchief and bring it up, and you give the illusion that you pulled it out of the handkerchief. That's how I did it. But, see, you have it right here. You put it before the show, you have it right there, and you show the handkerchief like so, the back and the front. And you watch your angles, and you just reach up inside the handkerchief, and you bring it out. That's all there is to it. What would that be for time? You well remember me from um, the trick where I said, no smoking. Yeah, that's sort of a little joke there. Well, anyway, I know magic, too. For this trick, I need a person from the audience. Now, since we don't have anybody, we're going to use the magician. <laughs> what in the world? Well, okay. All right, cameraman, don't be pussy. Don't mind us, uh, folks. Get out of the way! Get, Get out of the way of the camera! Okay. Oh, try, cameraman. Um, now. I, I can't see you now. Where did you go? I think he's had too much caffeine. I'm right here, okay. Um, no, I want to talk hey, to you. Hey, I want to do this trick. He said, someone's had too now, much caffeine today. Now, back to the, the trick. No. What I want you to do, do you believe in being hypnotized? Say no. Oh. No? You don't? 
Okay. But I'm going to hypnotize you, okay? Yeah. Now, what I want you to do, it's already done. I've already hypnotized you. What I want you to do is try to think of a card. Mm -hmm. I mean, wait a minute. Okay. Try to put your finger on the card that I'm going to say, okay? I wanna, I'm just going to pick cards randomly, all mm -hmm. right? Ten of clubs. Okay. This? Okay, I'll just hold on to this. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's ne do the next one. Ten of diamonds. What do you want to do this? Ten of diamonds? All right, ten of clubs and ten of diamonds, okay? Remember, remember all these, okay? Okay. Now I'm going to make it tough on you. Try and find the Joker. The Joker's probably right about. Right there? So it's a ten of clubs, ten of diamonds, and Joker. Okay, and, and I'm going to look at the Queen of Hearts. Okay, right, I would say this is Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts. Okay, I think that's it. Now, what were your cards? The Ten of Diamonds. Right. Okay. The Ten of Clubs. Oh, wait a minute, okay. And the Joker. So what was the card that I picked? The Queen of Hearts. All right. Okay, you can sit back down now. Now, how did he do that? For this, for this trick, you need a deck of cards. Now, at the bottom of the deck, memorize the first, the bottom card, okay? Memorize that bottom card. Now, this bottom card is the nine of spades, okay? Now, what I do is I spread the cards out. I tell the person to say, pick the nine of spades. Okay, they pick this card right here. I look at it, and I memorize this card, and then I put it down over here. Okay. Now, I say pick the Jack of Diamonds, which is this card right here. Okay, so they pick the Jack of Diamonds. Okay. Now, I look at the Queen of Hearts, and I say, well, I'm going to pick the Queen of Hearts. And I go to the bottom, pick that card, which is the Nine of Spades. And when I ask them to name their cards, they would say the Nine of Spades, the Queen of Hearts, and the Jack of Diamonds. But I got a question. What if they pick the bottom card when you ask that card? Well, that way you can improvise. You can say, keep the card, right? And when they, when they say it, you, you say, I'm getting an impression that it's the Nine of Spades, because you already knew what the bottom card was. Yeah. All right. I like to show you my, what I like to call, recycling. Now, a lot of people recycle. What they do is like this. I have these old cards here. Okay, that's enough. See? These are old, old cards that I'd like to recycle. Now, now, if I can get my helpful assistant to come over here, I'll show you what I do with things I need to recycle. Okay. Ah, my trusty base. This is for a machine that I had made myself from scratch. It's great for recycling. Here's the baseboard. Okay. Ah. Here's the walls of the machine. Okay. And here is the top. Ah. Oh, I've got you. Okay, here I go. Okay, now, what's your name? Cameraman? Okay, Cameraman. Go back to the camera and zoom in on this. I want the people at home to see this. Here are the cards, right? That's enough, Cameraman. Here are the cards in the box. Now, I'll take these cards, and as you saw, there's nothing nothing in here. We made it out of scrap. But I'll show you how I recycle stuff out of plain old box put together. I take it and I put it, I put it in a box, right? Like that. Okay. Now, I close the hatch and I say the magic word. Hocus, pocus, bam! It's done. Now, a little magic. I reach into the box and 
look what it's recycled to. An egg. Can you see that? Cameraman, zoom in. Show the audience. There it is. Oh, see? An egg. Now, let's say I, I want to recycle it as well. Well, that's pretty easy. Just put it in the box here. Then, shut it back up. I'll say the magic words. Hocus, pocus. And bam, it's done. What? Right. Okay, it's the same. Back it up. Back it up, cameraman. Please be patient. All right. Okay, assistant. Over here. It's so hard to find good work. All right, here. I'll take it apart. Take that. Take. Nothing in there. And the base. Unless you ripped your pants that we heard, anyway. And, just so you don't think anything, it is not under the table. <laughs> no either. Thank you. Mm. Cut. Mm. There is a red button. I hit it. I hit it. All right. Uh, all right. So, now, this is a fairly trick that you can do yourself. You can make it with a regular box or anything else. We'll try to supply you with the dimensions with this trick. But this is how it works. Assistant? Yeah? Put, what? put the base here. Put the base. Okay. You see it's made out of wood. It has these little notches here to hold the walls. And it's regular, your square type base. And I just, you just, I just paint it black, put that down. Okay, now for the wall part. Wall, you can paint it any color, as long as it fits, is smaller than the base. I'll try to give you dimensions and drawings on that. You fit that on top. Now, nothing fishy yet. Now, I asked my assistant for the third thing. This it. And that's it. But... As I showed the audience, they don't see what you're seeing right now. See, there's a bag there, see? See a little bag, let me make it a little easier for you to see, see? There's a bag attached to it, the back, and it hides behind this. Hides behind that, as you see, it's hidden behind that. But the audience sees this side, they don't see that side. And the bag's hidden. And, of course, stuff is preloaded. Let me get the cards out. So there's the cards. And in the pouch, there's the egg. See? Okay. All right. So we put the egg in. We do it like this. Okay, assistant, take it away. All right. Here's the routine. Hello, y'all. I'd like to show you my magic box. It's very tricky, so keep your eyes open like to show you how I recycle things. Now, let's say, like these old cards, all right? See these old cards? Yeah, these are old cards. Yeah, I like, well, if I want to recycle them, this is how I do it. I take this board here, see? Take it. This is a base. I'm making a machine that recycles my stuff. I usually do this for good. So I go, assistant. All right, wall, see, regular wall, nothing suspicious, nothing, nothing there, okay, okay, and of course, the top, all right, what you do, this is a, slide it in, you slide it in like, see how I'm doing it, I'm sliding the bag in. See, there you go. See, nothing's in there. Now, I close up the box, and here's where you go. You, you can say any magic words like Alakazam, Winnie the Pooh, anything you want to think of. And then you open it up. Then, you remember that pocket? Still there. You reach in. And before you reach in, you can reach out and 
produce an egg, or you can do this, like in my act. Take the cards that you say you're going to recycle, take them, and put them in the bag, like this. See? They're in the bag now. And you shut the door. You see the magic words? Hocus pocus. Alakazam! Now it's... Now it's recycled to... You open it up, and instead of pulling out the cards, you pull out the egg. See? Although I use a wooden egg so it won't crack. Put it back in. Close it again. You can say, hocus pocus. And poof. They're both gone now. And you take it off just like this. And you hand it over to your assistant. 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 Here's the bag right there, hidden behind the thing, with your cards and the egg. And the assistant takes it off. Then you pick up the walls. Show the walls, like this, and then you hand it off to your assistant, and you show the base. And that's how you can make a dove appear, or disappear, or make anything appear or disappear. Even an airplane. Walk in on stage. Okay. Now, one, two. Part, don't you? The minute, the, yeah. minute, the minute I start to count, the minute I start to count, get behind the scenes. Yes. Yeah. Get behind the scenes. Yeah. Did you, did you walk in on stage? Yeah. 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 Did you walk in on stage? They're having a 3.5 earthquake. Three. Hello. You want some uh, a new scar? Oh, uh, a new scar? Oh, oh man. Oh, a uh, wig? Oh, 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 hey, look, guys. Yeah. Ah. Uh, oh, I'm at the wrong stage. So sorry. <laughs> to the Magic Men show with your favorite host, Dick Van Dyke. Just kidding, of course. Billy Page and Tommy Story and, his, and the assistants of Mike and David and Matt. 
Hope you enjoy the show, and let's start it off with a big vanishing act. One, two, three. Putting magic men with your special, special host, David Duncan. Dave and Michael and Tommy and your very special magician, Billy. Yes, we all form the magic men. Ooh, great special effects. Now for the trick with some awesome music. All right. One. And.
right out. Two. You know that fooled me? I said I saw Matt go back there. Okay, darling. Max. Max! Are you all right? I'm fine. Try the lock, Max. It might be a relief. I'm looking, I'm looking. He can look all he likes, but it won't open. I've seen to that. Nice clothes, aren't they? Now I'm your spitting image. Clothes don't make a man. Take you back. Don't worry. The police will be here by dinner time. That's you. Of course it's me. How can I be sure? Max out. I'll take you home and give you proof positive. Oh. May I light your cigar for you? Oh, no, 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 thanks. <laughs> uh, perhaps you'd rather be somewhere else. I would. Then I'll not keep you a second longer than necessary. Would you step into the booth, if you please? Sit down. Be comfortable. Because you're about to go on a wonderful trip. Now wave goodbye. Can you hear me in there? Knock if you can. Now. Folks, got a minute? Sure. I think I got this trick down pat. I thought you gave up magic. I have, but this is a special trick. Come on. Pick a card. Any card. Go ahead. Uh. Look at it. Don't tell me what it is. Now put it back in the deck. 
shuffle the deck. Notice my hands do not touch a card. Max the Magnificent. All right, what next? Cut. Here's your card. King of Hearts. That's amazing. That is great. How did you do that? Magicians never tell, but it requires skill, technique, and years of practice. Oops. It is ready. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I wonder how he did it. Well, you heard him. Skill, technique, and years of practice. And the right deck of cards. What? You know, Max really is magnificent. Oh, yeah? Wait till we taste the roast. Vino, the boy magician, he used to charge $5 to make an appearance. Now his disappearing acts have made him one of the highest paid performers in the world. And that is no illusion. Lorenzo Lamas and Princess Stephanie for an amazing new special. The world's greatest magicians will astound you with terrifying illusions and death-defying escapes. Champions of Magic, ABC Monday. It was it's just a matter of just using my power and getting out of it once I had to lock pick. But you said you could only hold your breath for two minutes. I saw the clock. You were uh, 40 seconds over that. Well, it's not completely filled all the time. You know, it takes time to fill. So I really only had to hold my breath a minute and 40 seconds. And believe me, that's enough. I believe it. Thank you, Anthony. Well, I've had about as much excitement as I can handle right now. And remember, the escapes you've seen are performed by highly trained professionals. They're not the kind of thing you want to try in any way on your own. So for our incredible escape artists, I'm James Brolin. Thank you for being a part of Secrets of the World's Greatest Escape Artist. Good night, everybody. On Good Morning America, you'll think you're in France, climbing the Alps, enjoying Britain, or in the Wild West. But you won't be. You'll be right next door in breathtaking Canada. The world next door on Good Morning America next week, here on ABC. Most Americans grew up to believe this was the greatest country in the world. What about today? We sent ABC News correspondents all over America to ask all kinds of Americans what's great and what's not about our country. What we... Okay, now, pick, 
Any card. Any card out. Don't show it to anybody. Okay? Now show it to the audience. Okay. All right. Now memorize it. All right. Yeah. You you memorized it, right? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know they have to see it more. Well, let me show them over there. People around there. Just, okay. just give me the card. Stop them around. The audience has seen enough of the card. I still don't think you can do it, but we can practice it. Okay. Go to work. Um, he picked the uh, uh, Queen of Hearts. No. No. Try it, again. Uh, with the uh, Ace of Spades. No. Very good. Ace of Spades? No. 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 Right, the Ace of Clubs. Right. Very good. I knew it was a black card. Alright, you want to try it one more time? Yeah. I'm sure you can't get it this time. I'll show the iron. Ooh, I don't know. I don't think you can get this one. I'm holding on to this. I'll try. Uh, the ten of hearts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm trying to pull a magician, huh? Yeah. How about you just show the people some of your ring um, magic okay. while we go ahead and get the rest of the stuff ready? You got all the rings? Yes, it should be there. Yeah, including my college ring. Oh, what are you looking for, Bill? Oh. You're going to be sent down there. Okay. All right. Okay, let's show the ring. Okay, you can put that inside here. Thank you, too. Yeah. You, you again. Me? Yeah. Me again? Yeah, I think you're the troublemaker around here. Okay, try to get those undone. Can't you can get those undone? No. Here you go. You just take it and you see your link it. See how you link it? Mm -hmm. You just link it. I'll make them. I'll make them. There you go. Now examine it. Down and take it to the seat. Okay, the thing is link to the seat. Well, I'll show you. Watch. See what you don't know. There's probably a hole right here. See, there's, see, there's probably a hole. Oh, right there somewhere. I don't see it. You don't see it? No. You sure you don't see it? No, but I don't see it. No. I'll put this over here. On my head. See? Can you put it anything? No. Okay. Right, you see this? No, it's not. What kind of tricks can you do with this rope? Huh? Uh, a lot of things. What could you do with this rope? You think you can do anything with it? Yeah, yeah. You sure? Do you, you like the other one? Uh, I think so. Give me the... Here, while he's doing that, I might as well do some car tricks. Let's see here. He yeah. only had the rope stuff ready, so he'll have to duck down and hide. Yeah. It's not good. All right. Well, let's try it. I'm going to take this flank set. I'll spread it out. As you can see, flank. 
as the camera reveals, there's nothing on the cards whatsoever. Now, what I'm supposed to do, what I'm supposed to do, is get something on this. Did you see? It's all blank. Of course, who can tell? I'll take my pixie dust. Let's see what happens. One card. A space. Three cards. I'm going to put it on top. Now, I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to see what I get through the cut. Hold it up high. Ain't that a miracle? And this is a whole deck, believe it or not. A pile. It's a whole deck. But you know, I think I'll throw some more picks. I think I'll put this top card underneath and throw some pixie dust on it. And now, as you see, as you see, they're blank cards again. Are you ready yet? Yeah, I'm ready. Right. All right, wait a minute. I gotta change something. All right, I have two separate ropes. They're bright yellow. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna bind the two separate ropes into one by just knitting them together as one. Now the problem is, is you have an ordinary rope. Sometimes you can have an ordinary rope with with two ends, but then you got a magic rope, you usually have three ends. And then again, if you're lucky, you can have four ends. But if you don't want that, you just want an ordinary rope, just have it like that. But if you want one with a whole bunch of knots, then you, there you go, you go. One, two, three. So, all right, now, no, not yet. Okay, I'll show this quarter. Hold up. Uh, okay. Show this quarter. Okay. Now I'll take this empty 4.10. I'm going to rub it. Melts right through. Turn it sideways. You're looking straight on. You can't tell anymore. And it went through. Now, slowly it moves itself back together. It's solid. Now. Yeah, that coin. Oh, these coins? Yeah. Which one do you want? The 50 cents or the mm -hmm. Indian cents? Well, 50 cents and the missing coin. And while you're here, stay here. Oh. You're not going to do anything weird now. No. All right. Here, take the coat. Okay. All right. Now, see the, see the 50 cents? the brown Mexican coin. Mm -hmm. Now the brown Mexican coin is just a tad smaller than 50 cents. Now I'm going to put it together, right? All right, now I want you to hold your hands out, close it in a fist. Hold on. Now put your hands behind your back and separate the one coin so you have a coin in this hand and a coin in that hand. All right. Okay. I think I ain't got nothing on my feet. All right, now bring your hands up in a fist. Okay, this one, this is like a copper field strip. All right, one has the 50 cents, one has the brown Mexican coin, right? Now hand me the bigger coin. All right, there's the 50 cents. Now hand me the brown Mexican coin that's smaller. Well, you've got a quarter that's smaller, but at least in my pocket, there's the brown Mexican coin. Huh. Oh. All right, now do a little cleaning. Tommy Tim. This is 
going to, I know, you want to do the honors of putting them on here? It doesn't matter which way we do it, does it? No. What kind of magic trick is this? Is that a glitch? Oh, boy. If he's an enemy. Put it on the stand on the cycle. Okay. Now here we got dirty handkerchiefs on the line. Hold, hold on to it. Now I'm going to take this magical washing machine, stuff it in there. Okay. Now, okay, I, I want you to uh, wash the clothes. Okay. Now, spin drying. I can do a loop. Spin dry. Let me go like that. Okay. I think it's done. All right. You're ready. You ready to catch the 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 line, the handkerchiefs that are clean? Sure, they're clean. clean. They're all clean. You know, it's just clear pictures, but my coloring book is a whole lot different. I could set it down, take the pixie dust, of course, spread a little, and all of a sudden, the pictures have been automatically colored. Now, don't ask me how it was designed. I actually don't know how it's done myself. Now, the manual says that you should put some more pixie dust on it just to be sure. So I'm going to take this pixie dust right here and I'm going to put it right on the book. Now, it says to wait five seconds, so I've got a timer. All right, I think it's about ready. Let's take a look at it. Uh-oh. <laughs> See what happens when you wait a one second later? It just gets all erased. Well, now to go to my next trick, uh, the CD player. Now, most of you recognize a CD player and a CD. Well, this is a CD, but this is not a CD player. Let me make sure you know that. I want to make sure you know that. Now, this is a doozy. Make sure you don't try this at home because you might drive the person that owns a CD wild. But, Put the CD in the case. Take the fabric, slide it through the center. In it goes. Make sure it's in halfway. And you shut it. Now we'll cook it for 35 seconds in an overall heat of 150. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, <coughs> this is what you get. We're gonna, I'm going to use magic on it. Just watch it. Concentrate. And there it is. Wait a minute. Look at this. Still stuck. Well, let's see what happens. Nothing happens. Just disappeared. It slipped out of the clutches. And you see, the CD has escaped. One of my favorite tricks. Now this is a trick that isn't as easy as it seems, trust me. We have three different lengths of rope. I'm not sure you noticed that by now, but if you haven't, I thought I'd tell you that anyway. 
Alright. Now up around it goes. Up, up, and up. Now this trick is a very special one. And I think you'll enjoy it too. And I'll just show you why you'll enjoy it. You might just like this. As you see, they're all the same length. I could just spin it around if I wanted to, but let me see how tangled it gets. So I'm going to take it back up. This time I hope I get it right because several times I haven't got it right and it's messed up pretty bad. Alright. Now, just try to make it come back to normal. I'm praying that this will work. The Lord help me. Here we go. A one. A two. A three. Whoa, whoa. And there you go, folks. Except for now, the little one that was on the outside has jumped into the middle, as unexpectedly. And that's mainly it for my tricks. Now back to Billy Page and his friends. Have you had an outer body experience? Uh, no, I haven't. Well, I got, I got this rope, right? Yeah. Two pieces of rope. What? A, what? A, I didn't think they put it on right away. Right away? Oh. So I'm getting cold. So I'm getting cold. It's 20 below zero. 20 below zero. Here, take, take, take this and put it through. All right. Okay. We're well, gonna make the rope go through me. Yeah. That's your inner outer body. Yeah. Alright, take the other end through it. I think this is a little bit too big for me. Exactly. Okay. Okay, now turn around. Turn around. Okay. Okay, now back around the other way. Okay. Now, which, 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 which any ends do you want? Mm. How many two ends? This one. This one and what? And uh, this one. Okay. I'll tie it up. Hey, what are y'all doing? Oh, we're just going to have an inner body oh. Okay, I'll help? Yeah, you can. All right, all right, I'll hold on to you. Okay. All right, you ready to be squashed? There you go. Oh, that's all right. It went right through them. How'd you do that? Did I break your back? No. I heard something snap. I break it with my spine. Alright, now for our next trick. Tommy, why don't you go entertain them? Or Bill, why don't you entertain them with some card tricks? Card tricks? Okay. Oh, one more thing. You need it. Why? You lost a few screws. Oh, whatever. Okay. Now see the tin of spades? I'm going to take the tin of spades and I'm going to put it on the top. I'm going to take this one and just hit it. Now it's on, not there. It's on the bottom still. I'm going to take it again. Now it's on top. Now what I'm going to do is take that one Put that one there and jump back to the top again. Okay. Close your eyes. Top card hit the heart. I'll just mix the cards up. Yeah. 
stock is still. Now, the ace of hearts on the bottom, and there's no duplicates anywhere. My ace of hearts, I'm going to take it, drop right there, and now it's not there, it's over here. Uh, okay. 
I know. Go in front of the go in front of the side of the camera. What do you mean? Turn your back or that on. All right. right. Right here. Um. Okay. Are you finished yet? Yep. Okay. Now. I will not read nobody's mind unless I have the powerful pixie dust spread on these cards. Because it's, it's hard to explain. It, it has to do with the stars and the alignment of the Earth with yeah. Jupiter and all this stuff. But we're here to do that. Oh, what the card? Oh, oh, the card, yes. Oh, I almost forgot about that. The card, did that happen to be this card? Uh, yes. Oh, what did I say? You want to, how yeah. about, let me, let me show you one. Show me one? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's, he's, he's my mind reader. Oh, he is? Yeah. You know, I like this deck. Mm -hmm. This is not your, uh, number one deck, is it? Mm, no, not really. Okay. Because I like this type of brand. It's nice material. Like yours. Um. What do you suppose to do? First of all, what do y'all do? Oh, y'all was gonna lay him upside down? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Alright. He's leaving. What? Where is he going? Oh, he's going out from there. Um, oh, pick a color. Pick a blank color. Any car. Mm -hmm. Alright. That one on the corner, right one. Okay. Uh, pick one more. This one on the bottom left corner. Okay. Um, you come in. Let's see. I think I feel closer to this one. Am I right? Yep. That's the only one of them. You can't get from that one, I bet. Oh, you didn't know? Yes, I did. Let's do this. Let's do this. Another one. It's called finger magic. Do you remember how to do something like that, Tom? Uh, briefly. Well, while well, he's briefing, let David entertain. All right. Now that we got the amateurs off, of course I'm an amateur myself. We'll do a trick here. I'll lay three cards down and three rows. Now, this one will involve the cameraman himself. You may not see him, but he's going to be involved in this trick. Which pie do you want, cameraman? Number pile in the middle, the left side or the right side? The right side, okay? Now concentrate on a card. Have you concentrated on that card? All right. Now, I'm going to bury your card in the pile. Now it's all buried. Now I'm going to lay them out again. And, okay. Here's your card in this pile. Now this pile? Go now. Okay. That's so bad. I knew that. I just was testing you about this. Then I'm always. Let me get this here. Is this it? Is it in here? And let me guess. Your card happens to be this one. What is it anyway? Ah, very good card. Okay, we're 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 ready. You sure you're ready? Yeah. All right. Let me clear off the deck here. So you can do whatever you're going to. This is called finger mind mind reading. That's kind of funny, isn't it? There are these uh, German guys. They went to uh, 
um, restaurant or something and they, they entertained it and they made money off of it. But anyway, uh, I read the Mandy's book. Okay, Tommy, you go off. Okay. Or better yet, just have me back to me. Be better. Okay. What idea? Okay. Alright. We're just going to put fingers up, right? Not past ten, though. Alright. All right. Say I threw this much up and you threw this much. We'll add the total together. And when we get the total, he can tell you how many you threw up yeah. and I threw up to get that total. I don't believe it. It's, yeah. it's just too hard to believe. No uh, way. Well, just, just, just go along with it, okay? Uh, all right. All right, all right you go first. Okay. Okay. What was the total? Twelve. Twelve? Twelve. Let's see, um, you picked, uh, a low number. You picked two. Yeah. <laughs> right. You picked ten. Yeah, I go off. I want to try it some more time. I don't think it really works. You can't tell me. Well, two again. All right. Let's do it one more time. Okay, uh, ready. Okay, what was the total? Fourteen. Fourteen? You picked a low number. You picked four. You picked a high number, which is ten. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll go for it. I'll go for it this time. All right. All right. Turn your hand so we can see it out here. All I see is the side of it. Okay. Okay. All right. Eight. Eight. Seven, eight. Yeah. He's got the higher or lower now. All right. All right. This is a hard one. You take a lower one. Yeah. And uh, the total is eight. Yeah. So both hit four. Yeah. Okay, go up. This is amazing. Wait, hold on, I can't. Wait a minute. What, what, what? We'll, we'll do something. Okay, all right. All right, I'll. I'm going to take the test. Why don't you just start over, okay? Okay, start over. Okay. okay. I couldn't see what you had up because you oh. had it turned sideways in front of your coat. Oh. You hold it out like this in front of the black curtain right here. Oh. 